What are the most powerful cars ever? No, I'm not just talking about the cars that hold the record right now. I'm talking about every car that broke through big horsepower barriers over the years. Well, to find out, I've put together a list of the first cars to make one horsepower, 100 horsepower, 200 horsepower, going all the way up to the most powerful cars on sale today with more than 2,000 horsepower. In case you're wondering, I've ordered the cars according to their reveal date, not the day the first car was delivered. This is because most of today's hypercars are already sold out, even before they're shown to the public. So a car revealed in March 2019 with 1,600 horsepower goes on my list, but a car revealed later that year with 1,650 horsepower doesn't. Okay, you got that? Before you start commenting and going crazy. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching the CarWow list of the most powerful cars ever made. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. The first ever car was, of course, the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, made by Car Benz in 1885. This thing barely counts as a car. It only had three wheels, and you steered it with a weird tiller thing, like on a boat. Anyway, its one-litre, one-cylinder engine only made two-thirds of a horsepower, but that was still a world record, mainly because it was the only car in the world back then. The next car on my list was the first to make a whole horsepower. Oh yes, it was a Benz again, the Velo from 1894. It had a one litre, one cylinder engine yet again, but this time with 1.5 horsepower. That's more than double the power of Carl Benz's first car. Later versions even had three horsepower. Despite this, it still didn't have a steering wheel. Isotto Francini started out building engines for airships, but it also made cars like the Tipo KM from 1910. This had a huge 10.6 litre four cylinder engine. That's bigger than two Audi R8 engines. Although unlike two Audi R8s, the Isotta had to make do with 120 horsepower. At least it was the first production car with more than 100 horsepower though. The next car on this list is another Benz. Oh yeah, the car was pretty busy back in the early part of the 20th century. His 82 200 model from 1912 was the first car to crack the 200 horsepower barrier. Carl used the same 21 and a half litre four cylinder engine as in his 1909 land speed record car, which originally came from an airship. The first car to make more than 300 horsepower was the Duesenberg Model SJ from 1932 with a huge supercharged seven litre straight eight engine with 325 horsepower. But that wasn't enough for Duesenberg because it built a modified version called the SSJ in 1935 with 400 horsepower. That's almost as much as a brand new BMW M2 competition has. The latest Corvette C8 has a 6.2 litre V8 with 490 horsepower, but Chevrolet was building a Corvette with way more power than that back in 1967. It was called the L88 and it was a super exclusive C3 model with a seven litre V8. Chevrolet claimed it only made 435 horsepower, but it was actually producing between 540 and 580 horsepower. But what about the first car that officially made more than 500 horsepower? Well, that was the Ford RS200 Evolution in 1986. This was a road game version of the RS200 rally car, which had a 2.1 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine with 588 horsepower. I've actually done a video where we drag race some um, rallycross cars and one of them was an RS200. And you've got to watch that video, right? Because something awful happens to the Ford. Awful. If you click on the pop out banner up there, you can go check it out and see what it is. But make sure you keep this window open to come back to this video. Honestly, click on it, you won't be disappointed. The first car to make more than 600 horsepower was a Bugatti made back in 1992. But it wasn't a Veyron, that didn't come out until much later. It was actually the EB110 Supersport. This was a hardcore version of the regular EB110 that made 612 horsepower from its 3.5 litre quad turbo V12. It was revealed a few months before the 627 horsepower McLaren F1, which is why the Bugatti sneaks onto this list and the McLaren doesn't. Well, apart from the fact I've just mentioned it now. Just one year after Bugatti broke the 600 horsepower barrier, a company called Dower, or is that Dua? I, I don't know. Dower. They made a car with more than 700 horsepower. It was called the 962 Le Mans, and it was basically a Porsche endurance racing car with some license plates and a passenger seat. But because Dower's, Dewar's, or whatever they're called, Dower. those guys, their road cars, didn't have to follow the same rules as the racing cars, they were actually more powerful. 
Their twin turbo three liter flat six pumped out an insane 740 horsepower. That's almost 100 horsepower more than a brand new Porsche 911 Turbo S makes today. Koenigsegg has been around since 1994. And in 2004, just 10 years after its inception, it built the first production car with more than 800 horsepower. It was called the CCR and it had a supercharged 4.7 litre V8 that Koenigsegg actually borrowed from Ford. This engine made a staggering 817 horsepower and helped the CCR reach a top speed of 241 miles an hour. The first car to produce 900 horsepower is also the first car to make more than 1,000 horsepower. Now, any ideas what that is? Yes, of course, it's the incredible Bugatti Veyron. It will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 2.5 seconds and hit 253 miles an hour. So it was the quickest and the fastest of all time when it came out in 2005. And its huge eight litre quad turbo W16 engine produced 1,001 horsepower. So it was also the most powerful car ever. The next car on this list is the SSC Ultima Aero TT from 2007, which was the first production car with more than 1,100 horsepower. It had a 6.3 litre V8 from a Corvette with two massive turbos bolted onto it, so it made a whopping 1,180 horsepower. But that wasn't ultimate enough for SSC because it boosted the car's power to 1,287 horsepower in 2009. Then it gave it an even bigger 6.9 litre engine in 2013, which took power up to 1,300 horsepower. The second Koenigsegg on this list is the Regera. This was the first production car to produce more than 1,400 horsepower and 1,500 horsepower when it was revealed in 2015. That's one whole year before Bugatti revealed the 1,500 horsepower Chiron. Now, unlike the Chiron with its complicated W16, the Regera came with a hearty twin turbo 5 litre V8, but it was also boosted by three electric motors, so it made 1,000 521 horsepower in total. The next car on my list is the Rimac Nevera. This uses four electric motors and a huge 120 kilowatt hour battery pack to produce 1,914 horsepower. So it was the first car to break the 1,700, 1,800 and 1,900 horsepower barriers. And because it's an electric car, there's no reason for the environmentalists to get in a huff about it either. The Nevera was first revealed back in 2018, but Rimac didn't have a name for it back then, so it was just called the Concept 2 or C2 for short. But now the car's in production, they've named it Nevera, after a Croatian storm. Now, I bet you're wondering what happened to the Koenigsegg Jesko and the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus? Well, they both make around 1600 horsepower, but they were revealed in 2019. So that's a year after the Rimac, and that's why they aren't on my list. Lotus is most famous for building lightweight sports cars like the Elise. But in July 2019, it revealed the Avaya hypercar. Just like the Rimac, the Avaya has four electric motors, but combined, they produce an insane 2,000 horsepower. That makes it the first production car to break the 2,000 horsepower barrier. But it's not the most powerful production car in the world anymore. Since the Avaya was revealed, a company called Aspark launched its own electric hypercar called the Owl. <laughs> the Owl. <laughs> Why do they call it the Owl? <laughs> that car produces 2,000 and 12 horsepower. But because it wasn't the first car with more than 2,000 horsepower, it doesn't go on this list as being in first place. Oh no, the Lotus still is the top dog here. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know some other videos like this you'd like me to do in the comments below. I'll check those out and we'll see if we can make them happen. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can check out the CarWow Electric Car Hub page. And if you buy a car, that's electric through CarWow, we'll give you five months free subscription to BP Pulse and 500 miles worth of free electric charge.